Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who art always more ready to hear than we to pray, and art wont to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of thy mercy, forgiving us those things whereof our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, give unto us the increase of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain that which thou dost promise, make us to love that which thou dost command, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the epistle to the Galatians, beginning at the 16th verse. I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 11th verse. It came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered unto a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, 
Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. This is my last time speaking to you here at eight o'clock before I depart uh, next week. Mother Emma taking the eight o'clock service next Sunday. And I thought I should prepare some sort of grand send off. And then I thought, no, it would be much more in keeping to offer you a particularly nerdy insight into the beginning of this gospel. So that's what I shall do instead. It came to pass as Jesus went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Uh, a fairly inconspicuous looking sentence, but one of great excitement to the scholar because uh, it is not possible geographically to head to Jerusalem passing through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. It doesn't make sense. And that uh, sounds a, a foghorn in the scholar's ear and raises the question as to why Luke has written a piece of geographical nonsense. And there are sort of um, three main theories that I'll offer to you today. The first is that it teaches us something about Luke's knowledge of the area, and so possibly his own origins, that he just didn't really know his way around, that he wasn't a native to these parts. And uh, the scholars who take that uh, track then say that this can teach us other things about, um, uh, about Luke's own sort of historic origins and the things that he might write or the things he might not write, the things that he would know or he wouldn't know because of local knowledge. Um, that's uh, quite possibly the most truthful, that it's just a mistake, but it's also the most boring theory, so we'll skip over that one fairly quickly. Uh, the second is that uh, what is of principal importance to Luke is that Jesus is heading to Jerusalem. Uh, and this is certainly something that we see throughout uh, Luke's Gospel, that 
that Jesus has this unswerving direction towards Jerusalem, because Jerusalem will be, of course, the place in which his passion takes place. Uh, and it's also the place that his uh, disciples try and sort of warn him and, and ward him against. The times that Jesus tells his disciples that he must go there to suffer and to be crucified are the times when they're most resistant to his teaching and to his ministry. And so uh, the, the, the rationale on this one is that really the, the Samaria and the Galilee are of less consequence and what matters is that Jesus' focus is on Jerusalem and the places that he passes to get there, passes through to get there, are really rather irrelevant to the whole uh, story. The third, and, uh, and for my money, the best of the interpretations, uh, is that Samaria and Galilee are representative of the uh, Jewish and the Gentile regions through which Jesus is passing on his way to Jerusalem. I still think that there's some weight and credence to be given to this idea that Jesus' sight is set upon Jerusalem as the final place that his ministry must uh, take place in. But that uh, before that, not only must he go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, those in Galilee, but that also he must visit the Gentile lands of Samaria. That um, Jesus is going to Jerusalem, but that first he must pass through, and rather here uh, two kind of proper place names, uh, Samaria and Galilee stand in for the place of the Gentiles and the place of the Jewish people. And certainly that seems to fit in with the rest of the story that we have today, where yet again a Samaritan surprises Jesus' disciples by being the one who comes back to give thanks, whereas those who uh, are healed from within Jesus' own faith decide not to turn back to him. Uh, it's a story about uh, faithfulness, that, that all ten of them go immediately to see the priests is remarkable. That's an instruction following the Levitical law that you have to kind of go to the priest to uh, have your, your healing and your cleansing from leprosy verified. The fact that they all are willing to believe is, um, is extraordinary. Uh, it sounds as though in the story that they might know something of Jesus first because they cry out for his mercy. They don't cry out for, uh, for healing or they don't ask him who he is as he passes by but they know that he's somebody already who has shown mercy to people in their situation and may do it again. But it's just this one Samaritan who returns and Jesus remarks on it that no one else comes to give glory to God but this one outsider. And it's a reminder that Luke's gospel is full of this theme of the outsider being welcomed in, of the person who is normally sidelined, uh, who faces... Uh, the, the ire of society, the person who is downtrodden and, and thought little of, is the one who is raised up, brought to the centre and included in God's kingdom. And so we might take two messages from this passage, uh, well, or three possibly. The first, the celebration that Jesus goes not only to Galilee but also to Samaria, uh, is good news for those of us of Gentile origin, that we are welcomed and included into that good news. The second is that Jesus's mission is always one of inclusion, of drawing in people from the outskirts and the edges, and we as his disciples are called to model that. And finally, that it is faithfulness that heals the man who then turns back and gives thanks and glory to God, and that we might consider in our own lives the way in which God has been faithful to us and the times in which uh, we have too easily gone on our path, neglecting our turning back and giving thanks. Amen. All things come of thee, and of thine own do we give thee.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. But we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that with hearty, and repent, hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members, incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, 
by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.